Shalom. How to keep the Shabbat? This is a question that many people ask, especially those that's coming into the knowledge of the truth coming out of Christianity, where they've been keeping Sunday worship, and they have no understanding, no clue how to keep the Shabbat because it's all new to them. Um, some people that keep the Shabbat, they may not be completely keeping the Shabbat. They may be breaking it and not knowing. So what I'm going to do here is just go over a few scriptures to show how to keep the Shabbat. And the first scripture is Deuteronomy 5, I'm going to read 13 and 14. And it says, Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah, your Elohim. In it you shall do no work. You nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your maid servants, your man servants, nor your your ox, your ass, nor your cattle, nor the, the stranger that's within your gates, nor your man servant and your maid servant may rest as well as you. So again, this was a day that he created as a day of rest. He gave us six days to work and that just one day is a Kadash day. It's a set apart day. And uh, this is the fragments of the sons of Sadat. You will find the sons of Sadat um, in Ezekiel 44 and 15. You will see, you will read there where it says the sons of Sadat kept charge when the children of, of Israel went off. So these were they were of the priests and they definitely kept the most high charge and this is 13 fragment 13 i'm gonna read 13 through 27 and it says no man shall fast of his own will on the sabbath so right here we're being told a lot of people don't know this but they will try to fast on the sabbath and we are not to fast of our own will on the Sabbath. Now, if that Sabbath falls on a feast day that requires fasting, then that's exceptional. But other than that, you don't fast on your own on the Sabbath. You have six days to fast unless, you know, the Most High give you, uh, He lay upon your heart to fast a certain amount of days. Now, when it's consecutive days, this is something different. It's coming from him, just like Yahushua fasted 40 days. Moses, when he was getting the commandments, he fasted 40 days. Uh, 14, no man shall walk after the animal to pasture it outside of the city more than 2,000 cubics. I'm not going to put a whole lot of emphasis on the animals. Um, none shall lift his hand to smite it with his fist. If it be stubborn, it shall not be removed outside of his house. No man shall carry anything from the house to the outside or from the outside into the house. Now, this is where it gets sticky because many people, they will, they're, they're used to, they're accustomed on the Sabbath to get bags, laptops, computers, whatever, on their way to their classes, their Sabbath class. And they don't know it, but right here, you ain't supposed to be bringing anything outside of your house or inside of your house. And he that be in the vestibule, he shall, he shall not carry anything out of it or bring anything into it. None shall open the cover of a vessel that is pasted on the Sabbath. And this is something that we do. We, we have a certain jar of jelly that we love. And it's on really tight. It's sealed real tight. I mean, you have to hit it on the floor. You have to hit it on something hard to get it to, to snap open because it's real hard. You're not to open up those containers that's sealed on the Sabbath. And I know many people do this. Make sure, you know, if you're going to need it that Sabbath, open up that container before sundown. No man shall carry on him spices. To go out or come in on the Sabbath. None shall lift up in his dwelling house rock on earth. So you're not even to pick up a rock off the ground. So you see how 
this can get a, a little tedious right here. Don't forget I said in, in previous videos, they were told not to come out of the tent in the wilderness. You see, so that's not as, it, it, that to me, it goes right in line with this. Let not the nursing father take the suckling child to go out or to come in on the Sabbath. So if you got a young baby that's on the bottle, you can't take this baby out of your house and go to any Shabbat class. You're breaking the Shabbat. And this is something that you won't be told. This is something you just have to, you're going to have to learn on your own. That's why I always say do your own research. I'm going to leave, um, I'm going to leave all of these these scriptures here to, to go back over it yourself. Um, let me see what I was at. 21. No man shall provoke his manservant or his maidservant or his hiring on the Sabbath. No man shall help an animal in his delivery on the Sabbath. So they couldn't even help the animals give birth. And if it falls into a pit or ditch, he shall not raise it on the Sabbath. This they did, but they weren't supposed to do it. No man shall rest in a place near to the Gentiles on the Sabbath. No man shall suffer himself to be polluted. Sorry about that. For the sake of wealth and for gain on the Sabbath. And if any person falls into a place of water or into a place of, he shall not bring him up by a ladder or a cord or instrument. So again, what are they doing out in where it's a hole in the ground? They're, they're, when you're out and about, things can happen. When you, If you're trying to drive on the, on the Shabbat, things can happen. If you get a flat tire, you ain't supposed to change the tire. But see, that's another, that's another gray area there. People get a flat on the, on the Sabbath. I'm sure they're going to change their tire and say, oh, well, we have grace. We have favor. We can break it and we'll be all right. But remember what I said in previous videos. No man shall offer anything on the altar on the Sabbath save the burnt offering of the Sabbath. So as is written, accepting, accept your, your Sabbaths. So again, some of these things may seem a little tedious, but this is, this is what was written. This is what they knew. And this is... Nehemiah 10:31, and it says, "And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we will not buy from them on the Sabbath, on it on the Kadash day." So here, they're you know they make an agreement that they're not going to be if anyone come with something to to buy, they're not going to be buying anything from them. And we're going to see a count of that here. And I'm going to paraphrase some of this. This is Nehemiah 13, 15 through 22. And in those days I saw in Judah um, trending wine press on the Sabbath. So here they are, they were breaking, coming up out of the, they coming out of captivity only to break the Sabbath and loading asses and all also wine, grapes, figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought in into Jerusalem on the Shabbat day. And I testified against them in that day when they sold victuals. So here, you know, again, this shouldn't have been going on. It shouldn't have been happening. There dwelt the men of Tyre also day in, which brought fish, all manner of ware, and sold on the Shabbat until the children of Judah and Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil is this? And he was supposed to. What evil is this you've done to profane the Sabbath day? And he's telling them, Did not our fathers did the same thing? And Elohim bring all this evil upon us in this city. So this is the reason that those evils came upon them for profaning the Sabbath. Verse 19, And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Shabbat, I commanded the gates be shut and charged that they should not be open till after the Shabbat. And some of my servants sat at the gate 
that they should not burden that no burden be bought in on the Sabbath day. So what the merchants did, the merchants and the sellers, they sat outside and they, they lodged there. And he says, verse 21, Then I testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. So here he is serious. He's telling them, you, you know, he's talking about laying hands on them. And I command the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come and keep the gates and kadosh the Sabbath day. Remember, he's saying, remember me, O Elohim, concerning this. So he, he's telling Yahuwah to remember his acts and what he's done here. Um, doing all he can not to profane the Shabbat and keeping others from profaning the Shabbat. And I'm going back to Jubilees, and I'm going to read uh, 29 and 30. And it's going to sound a lot like what we just, what you just heard from the sons of Sadat. And it says, declare and say to the children of Yasharal, the law of this day, both that they should keep Sabbath thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the air of their hearts. And that it is not lawful to do any work thereon, which is unseemly, and do thereon their own pleasure. So right here, you cannot do your own pleasure on the Shabbat. You can't. It's not a time where you, you know, open, watch a, new, a, a good movie with some popcorn. That's, this, this is what it's talking about. And that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, or that is not lawful. To draw water, to bring in or take out. So here we go. Bringing in and taking out. Throughout your gates, any burdens. Which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwelling. Verse 30. And they shall not bring in nor take out from their house to house on that day. Same thing we just read in Sons of the Dot. You're not supposed to be taking in and out of your house. And this is what many people are doing today. That's that's profaning the Shabbat and they have no idea what they're doing. For that day is more Kadash and Barak than any Jubilee day of the Jubilees. On this we kept Shabbat in heavens before it was made known to any flesh to keep Shabbat therein on earth. So we're shown right here that, you know, this Sabbath was kept in heaven before it was even made known to man on earth and this is what we are to do while we're keeping it here on earth it's being kept in the heavens now in his land it's like you're on the correct time but in the western world in america you're off you know you could be six seven eight hours you're off but you still keep it at at sundown uh Two other points. Some people have questions about, um, you know, taking baths. If you want to, it's a, it's a day of relaxation. If you want to uh, take a nice soak, a nice bath, that's, that's fine. You can do that. You're relaxing. Um, again, you can't do your own pleasure, your own will. So husband and wife, you have to refrain that day from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, no intimacy, no um, sexual intercourse. You know, it's 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 a kadash day, and it is to be kept kadash. Um, I hope this this lesson helps, and I hope you learn and you you grow from it. This is this is what this is what you do. This if it's something you didn't know before, after watching this. You know, video, Yada goes to Yahuwah. You know, he gets the praise for it. But, um, you know, continue to do your own research and your own study always. Shalom.